Hey, everybody. It's Lisa. <laughs> I'm Chris. And we're the Knit Sheep Studio Podcast. This is episode 16. Woo. I couldn't have told you what episode number it was on a bet. <laughs> you know what? I, I write the show notes. So <laughs> I got to keep up. Now, let's just say one day I will get it a little messed up and I will either just keep going from wherever I landed or we'll just back it up and confuse everyone. Just so you know, that will happen one day. <laughs> How you doing, Chris? Uh, oh, is that one of those days? Uh, well, the day we are filming this, it is uh, two days before the snowstorm that's coming. So we're planning to just hunker down through the storm. As a matter of fact, I if am If we hunkered anymore, we'd be on the ground. <laughs> I'm planning to do a storm cast on. Uh, so that's my big plan for the storm day. And maybe I will bake some cookies. I have no plans. I'll probably just be hiding in my bed. <laughs> Put a blanket over my head. There you go. At least you'll be nice and toasty warm. It's going to be a lot of candy crush in my future. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all want to know the truth I'm addicted to Diner Dash So I can't really talk about her candy crushing habit Like strung out It's the craziest thing You know what I didn't play Diner Dash For many moons Crystal actually got into it first I'm more of a Minecrafter And um and the thing is, she used to make fun of me I did because I, like, I didn't know you had such a passion for food service I, I did I was like it's a it's a game about serving food in restaurants, really. And now I was like, "How is that a game?" You think she invented it? Oh, I'm all in it to win it. Okay, I'm collecting the jewels. I'm playing Game of Thorns. I came in don't, fourth for the first time in Game of Thorns. Don't let her have like an hour free play or something. Or oh, you had a twenty four hour free play once, and she didn't want to go to sleep because she was like, "I have a twenty four hour free exactly twenty four hours of unlimited supplies." <laughs> It's just like you have to go to bed now. I was just like, I didn't realize how often they would give them to you. So I was like, okay, I got to I gotta work this out. It's like, even when I win a free play doing something or another now, I don't start it until I can maximize it. So if it's too late at night, I don't start it. I've got one lurking in, you know, the, the secret menu now mm-hmm. that I'm not going to start. Maybe I'll save that for storm day. Do you see how she like plans and she thinks about this game when she's not playing it? Like you see? It's like my niece has gotten a little out of Minecraft, so I don't really have anybody to Minecraft with right now. <laughs> and I personally I'm trying to get into like the more magic aspect of it, but I'm terrible at um <coughs> saving up experience points so I can do as much magic as possible. And I don't even know what, what any of that means. So I feel like we should say something about yarn now before people turn us off. (laughs) So, you know what? Let me give you guys an update on the whips. I've only got one active, well, one and a half active whips. I'm not. Yeah, she can't like really say maybe two active whips. Yeah, that's what we'll say. We'll say two active whips. I'm working on my. Painting honeycombs. I got it right on the first try. And it's so big now. Oh my God. I love that. Let me bring it back over this way. So, do you know how many rows of cells you're going to have when you finally get down to like one cell on the row? 16. The 16th one will just have just, you know, a cell and some change. Okay. Um, but it's going swimmingly and my rows, each one of these steps represents a reduction of rows. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've reduced it by by 88 stitches already. So now the rows are actually going faster because mm. I was feeling, I, I will be very honest, I talked about this on Instagram this week. I was feeling like I was doing a lot of knitting <laughs> and making no progress. My rows did not feel any shorter. They didn't. They, they, they were objectively shorter, yeah. but it didn't feel that way. Okay. But now I've gone from all the way out here to in here, 
and I can feel a difference now. I'm turning, you know, turning and knitting back or purling back faster each time. So loving it. And I was worried that I was going to run out of yarn and I was right. I was going to run out of yarn because this is the first ball of a 200 gram, mm -hmm. 660 yard ball. So I was absolutely right. I'm so glad I grabbed that extra ball because I would have had to have had a moment if I just completely run out of yarn. Like, oh, what do I do now? So I have the yarn to continue and I have the some extra balls of the cream. Although so far, this is one ball. Of, I just started mm -hmm. the second ball of the cream, like one cell back. All of the rest of this came out of one ball. So it's a really good on yarn kind of project. Mm -hmm. And if, like I said, the easiest thing to do if you wanted to make it bigger was I just upsized the yarn and upsized my needles. So I did want to make it bigger and it's going to come out a really cozy enveloping size. And this is very, very happy. Okay. At least yeah. this third person happy, not just first person. Oh no, I'm so happy. I have to go into the third person. Okay. That's how happy Lisa is. Okay. And I'm at the point where I've memorized the pattern now. Mm -hmm. So I'm not like stuck on the I had written out like two little index cards of the main repeats. So after you Low these many repeats. I finally memorized it, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going. <laughs> you want to have? So I have. <laughs> one whip, not one whip that becomes one and a half that becomes two. Um, one whip, and that is my my fuzzy cardigan, which might get stuck with the name fuzzy cardigan. Oh yeah, it's definitely the fuzzy cardigan. <laughs> And I'm holding together Angora lace and mohair. And I just finished a sleeve. So this is what I wanted my sleeve to be. It's wide most of the way down, but then towards the wrist, it's mm -hmm. narrow, and I have this long cuff. So is this like a bishop sleeve? I think that's what they I, call this shape. It's wide and narrow. Okay. <laughs> and it's exactly the sleeve that I wanted, and I'm extremely happy with it. Um, and I, you know, I don't know if I mentioned last time that I had concerns that I was going to run out of the mohair. And I did. Yeah. I did completely run out of mohair. Um, so I started my second sleeve. And this is as far as like, I need to do 60 rows. I got just shy of 18. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nowhere even near. <laughs> With my last ball of mohair. Uh, this stitch pattern, turns out, is a yarn hawk. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it just it it just takes a, like compared to like just single crochet, it just takes so much yeah. more yarn. So I use I think five balls of mohair up to this point, and they were I think two hundred and nineteen yards, and I used. I'm about to start, or did I just start? I think I just started my fourth ball of angora lace and angora lace is like 400, 400. and change yeah more than 400. so um there i know there are like ways and like my mom is always talking about like a method she uses for figuring out how much yarn she's gonna need to make a thing and i usually don't try to like figure that out ahead of time i just like to assume i have enough <laughs> <laughs> okay that's what you do all righty but i see now the error of my mistake yes. <laughs> and i'm going to have to start putting a little more thought into my my yardage calculations before i start something especially if it's something i'm just making up because did I mention I'm out of mohair? Yeah. Okay, because yes, I'm did. out of mohair. So mom thoughtfully offered up some yeah. spare mohair that it's she like had. Really nice, right? And it's like a creamy kind of. It's a little darker, I think, than this. But, but it, it, it might have worked. But okay, so this is Ella Ray Silky Kid, and it is like a seventy thirty, you know, mohair silk. 
my mom's mohair is like wool, acrylic, and mohair. Oh, I didn't know there was wool in it too. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. And I really miss that silk. It is nowhere near as soft. It's kind of rough, and I feel like one arm's gonna be itching all the time if I were to try to finish my sleeve out of it. Yeah, let's so just get some more. Just, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and get some more Ella Ray. But that means like my sweater is on pause. This was a completely unplanned, mm -hmm. you know, break that I'm gonna have to take from this sweater. And remember, it's like my only project at the moment. So I'm gonna have to find a way to occupy myself until my Ella Ray shows up. Because, you know, we're about to have a snowstorm. Mm -hmm. So, Lord only knows when I'm going to see that yarn. Just, yeah. Just, I'm going to just sit in my rocking chair. What <laughs> <laughs> that you have a rocking Waiting chair. Waiting for the yarn to come in. You know where you can turn any chair into a rocking chair. Because... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But the body the body's done. And one sleeve is done. And here's my second sleeve. But it's it's going. Other than not having no hair, um, it's actually going very yeah, it's well. It's going swimmingly. <laughs> I know what you might want to do. Did you record like exactly how you built the sleeve? Yeah, I wrote down. I mean, I wrote how many stitches are in each row, and I wrote how, down how I did my decreases. My decreases for sleeves are usually quite simple mm -hmm. because I usually do. 14 inches at the top of the sleeve and seven inches at the bottom of the sleeve at the mm -hmm. wrist. So I always decrease by half. Um, that makes the math just a little bit easier for me. Yeah. So that, that's the same thing I did this time. I had 80 stitches and I decreased down to 40 stitches. And that wasn't an issue. Fab. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at my sleeve. Those are so pretty. Yeah. That, that is super cute. Yeah. That is super good. I love it. <sighs> so that was like, I, you know, I, I'm designing this based on a, a sweater I have in my closet. And that was like the one feature that I really most wanted to recreate, that, mm -hmm. that sleeve shape. So I'm very happy that I figured that out. So did you just do single crochet for the cuff? Mm hmm So the rest is like this cluster stitch that like, Eats yarn. so much yarn and I'm like how is this happening I thought I was going to have me some um, Angora lace left to use in another project and I had all kinds of hoop dreams y'all and here I am with one sleeve oh. oh so that's where I am on the whip you know these are some of the perils of having of, of being a single whipper yeah, <laughs> you know, but it, it, it's just that's just where I am right now. So I will probably I have a project that I swatched that I might just start that, and then I have some things in the idea stage that I don't know. You got that. I, I feel your pain. I'm like, oh, I'm I mean, just that. completely ran out of my head. Just it wasn't even close. It wasn't like, oh, well, I get to finish these last two rows. It was just like <laughs> You didn't get to play yarn chicken, did you? No, I thought that's what would happen, but no. You ever seen someone like actually trying to chase a chicken? It was more like that, and the chicken just went, I saw Rocky. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I saw Rocky. It was more like that, where you just keep running after it and falling yes, down. Where and... Rocky was chasing the chicken, not when Creed was chasing the chicken. <laughs> Rocky was like, I think chickens got slower. <laughs> so, yeah. That's no whip. Oh, there you go. It, it's going to be fine. Yeah. She's, she's a frozen whip right now. She is. Like, but you know, it's appropriate. She looks like, you know, something that a frozen character would wear. Don't say that. We get sued. <laughs> you know how a Allegedly, certain company is. Disney. Allegedly. You know how a certain company mm. is. <laughs> Allegedly. It looks nothing like that. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> So the other thing that I'm working on just steadily is my 10 stitch blanket. It's just going to get bigger every week. So I might start just showing it to you like once or twice a month. But every time I work on it, I'm a little bit happier. So what I've started to do is rather than just doing 10 rows, excuse me, 20, 
20 ridges for every single day. My corners, I'm gonna do both halves of the corner in one color because I just like that better. I just like the way it looks. But, you know, there's just something about the patchworky way it looks that just pleases my heart. And it kind of reminds me of like the patchwork kind of stuff grandma would make. So I just feel, I don't know, extra cozy and happy working on it. And the patchworkier it looks, <laughs> the happier I am. And I can't wait until, you know, other colors start creeping in. Because all this just came from my stash. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be my stash project for, for at least this this one year. I don't know how big it's going to end up being. I, and I love that kind of mystery about it. And I've started writing that blog post I was telling you guys I would write where I catalog, you know, gather together a bunch of this style of blanket for temperature blankets mm -hmm. because I was very specific in my needs. Nothing daunted me like those long rows because I see why people give up on the temperature blankets. If you have a 200 stitch row to work through and you get a couple of days behind, I know that would get put in a bag and put away somewhere. <laughs> At least that, that, that's how my brain would work. I'd be like, oh, this is hopeless. But doing it just with 10 stitches on a double pointed needle and working a couple of days ahead is no biggie. If I let the, the time catch up to me, because I think this is like the 27th or 28th. That's today. Yeah. The 27th today. Yeah. This is, this is the 27th. I did this like day before yesterday. Now I can just do the next few days and Shazam. I'm never really that behind. You have to really trust your meteorologist for that. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> that, that's why I'm not going like two months ahead because mm -hmm. the weather report within five days is usually quite accurate. Okay. I mean, they never tell you it's going to be 32 degrees and it's 100. <laughs> <laughs> the way the weather's getting fast. <laughs> because we did have a day that was nearly 60 degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I was looking at that one it. patch. Was just like... Yeah, it was that one day that it was nearly 60 degrees. Okay. So as we get closer to spring, we'll see more of that color. And that also keeps my interest because it keeps changing. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing to knit because it's all garter stitch. Like, yippee kaye, yes. So I will have that blog post out uh, the same day this podcast is available. So that'll be next week, Monday. And I gathered both knit and crochet blankets because there's so many fun things you could do. You do not have to do long rows of stripes to do a temperature blanket if you want to. Anyway, that's that. <sighs> so because I'm not a monogamous knitter, I, I really wanted to cast on something small. That I could just have one. Wait, I'm sorry, did you cast on something else? No, I'm not talking about the blanket. No, no, no. You know, the blanket's just always there in the background. Uh -huh. But I wanted it's to have. Hip. Yes, yes, I did. I'm going to cast on some socks. Uh, just a little. Definitely. Yeah, that's it, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read my mask. I don't believe you. I wanted to try out the same girl lace, though. I haven't gotten a chance to use yeah, it. Yeah, I like it. I like it very much. So it's the most interesting sock yarn. It's Merino and Angora, which is a rabbit um, kind of hair. So I wanted to make some socks that would be kind of neutral in tone, but still have a little bit of life to them. So I brought out, I wanted to also use, I want to knit more from my books because I have I have a few books and I haven't knit a lot of things from them, although I've learned a lot of techniques from them. So I brought out my 52 weeks of socks and I chose the Alvar socks. So let me just pop it up for you on Ravelry. Actually, you know what? I gotta, gotta do a screen share.
Okay, there we go. Are those cute or what? Bring that up a little bit bigger. And this book has been out since last year. Mm -hmm. I think this might be a 2020 or 2019 publication. 2020. Yeah, it's a 2020. So if you don't have the book, uh, you could actually buy the patterns individually now. But I thought this was so cool and such a fun thing. And I've never done intarsia in socks. And if you wanted to try out intarsia, but not on a large scale, <laughs> I think this was a, a great choice for doing that. But I love this little detail. And my yarn just so happened Can to kind of resemble... You know what? I probably know. No. <laughs> you know what? I wave when I'm on the phone, too. <laughs> you have to click stop sharing. Yeah, I'm going to stop the share. Okay. At the top. Blue oh, there it is. There. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> She's showing y'all stuff like you. She's not screen sharing and you can actually see her. Yeah. <laughs> my bad. I was like, can, can they see you right now? Probably not. <laughs> But anyway, we're back now. Woohoo! This is such a professionally run podcast. Yes, indeed. <laughs> but my yarn even kind of looks like the yarn that they use. So I was like, I think I'm making these socks. Love, love, love. And like I said, I'll be able to practice my intarsia. And just on a small scale. So just a small, quick little project. I'm hoping to finish them in about two weeks. What you got? Uh, it's funny you mentioned intarsia. Uh oh. Because I've been I've been wanting to learn some intarsia, but I feel like I should work from a pattern at least the first time. So I was looking at the um <clears throat> the acre sweater that's in the what is it the winter twenty nineteen issue of pom pom, and I might make this. I don't know if it's going to be my next. Here's the problem. I don't know what to do right now because I have to order this yarn and then wait for it to come. I don't know how long it's going to take. So it's like, do I start something like as involved as this? And then, you know, no way I'm going to stop when my yarn comes in. Or do I do something a little bit simpler? I, I My head is everywhere right now because running out of yarn is just throwing me for a I loop. I see that. Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> So, and of course, me being me, it was like after midnight when it happened, But right? of course. <laughs> These things never happen at like four in the afternoon. Um, but yeah, it's an Intarja sweater project. And I thought it had four colors, but I looked at the pattern and it only has three colors. Okay. However, it is much more yarn intensive than I had believed. I thought I could do like one skein each of the Angora lace. Really? Then, no, it's going to take two to three skeins. How so? That's what they say. Because you know what? It has like a metric F ton of ease in it. Oh. So it's got, I think it's something like eight to 10 inches or something of ease. Because hold on. If I can find. I think I want to look at the pattern. Yeah. So they say that the model has a 33 inch bust, but she's wearing size three. So that is a 48 inch. Oh, wow. Bust. So it just, it has a lot of ease in it. So it's gonna take a lot of yarn. Although I'm tempted to make this short sleeve, not only to save on some of the yarn, but I think that would be a cute version of it. So yeah. that might save me a little yarn, but yeah, it's gonna take a lot of yarn, Oh, but it'll be a, a fun, like, a fun sweater, yeah, yeah, it'll be a cute little sweater, I think. Yeah, I'll show you guys a picture of what it looks like. All our patterns start with the letter yes. A. <laughs> so that is an intarsia sweater, and it's worked yes. um, side to side. Oh. Can't see me either right now. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, and it's crochet intarsia. Mm -hmm. So... I'm thinking to do that with some Angora lace, just because this project I'm doing, I held an Angora lace with something else, and I would like to do a project with just the Angora lace by itself. Mm -hmm. um, 
But yeah, that that you know, it was it was a very popular sweater when it came out. If you look on Ravelry, you'll see a bunch of finished versions of it. Yeah, I think it's beautiful. I love how those wedges come together. Yeah, I think it's really cute. And doing it side to side makes that seem a lot more possible. <laughs> that, right. That's yeah. So I was thinking to do it either. So I was looking at this. Well, I was looking at. I don't know what color to do it. Okay, that's the short version. <laughs> these are the colors that she's considering. <laughs> um, so I thought about these three, but I like went halfway across the room. Okay, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I feel like this is on a little too matchy matchy on the one hand, but on the other hand, I feel like this would look great with blue jeans. Oh gosh! Yeah. So I'm a little torn. Mm. And then I was thinking about these three colors because that's not as easy or clear a match, but I think it still works. So maybe these three. Okay. You know what? Let us know in the comments. Do you like the blues or the brown red multi? So we'll see. That, that's one possibility for, like, my next project. You know what you could do so that you don't have to feel like you started and stopped? Do your swatching and whatnot. Practice the intarsia technique. Yeah, I could do all of that. Yeah, and that will give you the work. And it's work you need to do anyway to get that project going. That way you can take some notes, figure out how much you're really going to need. Here's the other thing. Uh-oh. <laughs> I have a project that I swatched already. Mm. So I think I showed the swatches on, on the podcast previously. But remind everybody. But it was it was the oh that one. La la. So this is which one I'm connected to. Okay. Okay, so I swatched two different stitch patterns here. Like those, and then oh, why do I have so many swatches? Oh my god, I've been hanging out with you too long. <laughs> and then there's that, which I actually really like. Yeah, oh, that's it's cute. That's kind of cool. And then I think this is this might be the same as half of this one, but I think I just did it by itself. I like that. I don't yeah. know. Now oh, I'm torn again. I thought I made it this. I think I like this one because the way it plays the color changes yeah. it makes it a very subtle shift and i think the basket weavy one kind of breaks it up more i i don't know the I, so i've already swatched right i clearly haven't made a decision based on the swatches but i've already swatched and this was supposed to be a vest mm -hmm. and you know vests have no sleeves <laughs> so i think go much faster than like something like the anchor sweater right yeah yeah so and then I'm also thinking that I want to get more into like making a season ahead. And so the sweater vest could be more like of a springy garment. Mm -hmm. And so like it makes sense to start that now-ish, right? Yeah. But then when would I get around to my anchor sweater? I don't know. I don't, my head is <laughs> just like bursting with cue items. You have no idea. This is, this is like nothing. The stuff that I'm like thinking about making, it's like, when would I leave the house? When, huh? when would I go anywhere and do anything? Because I, I would just be like the crazy yeah. lady who stays in the house and stitches all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to work on that. I'd have a really cute wardrobe that no one ever sees. No one ever sees. That's right. <laughs> so. This was a possibility mm -hmm. for what I might do next. But Kim Sabe. Kim Sabe indeed. <sighs> did, did you have another thing? No, that's that's it for me. Okay, let me tell you about something else. Uh oh. <laughs> See what had happened was when we ordered yarn for the fall. Which is like back in August, right? Um, one of the yarns we ordered, several colors were back ordered. So most of those came in. It was the cumulus. 
But like a few days ago, it literally yarn showed up on our doorstep. Yeah, just out of the blue. Woo. Like a lost puppy that we just felt we had to take in. So <laughs> we have this cumulus daffles here in a color called Bora Bora, which I think is so much fun. And I love that it's got a little purple in it. It's got the green, it's got the blue. It's just got all of the things. And I had long ago intended to make a skirt out of this cumulus apple and I just didn't. And I was thinking this would also be a spring item because I've been making it out of cotton. Oh yeah. Um, I was thinking to go ahead and try my hand at this skirt again. So want to do that one last screen share. Yeah. I'll show you her skirt she's playing from a pattern this time, believe it I or know, not. I know, right? And that's a whole other thing for me. But I like the freedom of working without a pattern. And it's called a slant. Right. So this is the slant skirt. It was in the fall 2014 issue of um, Interweave Crochet, which they've stopped publishing. And I'm not at all put out by that. Nope. No, not you. <laughs> I'm just saying they're going to keep publishing the knit magazine, but not the crochet magazine. I, I see what you all think of us Interweave. I do. But I already have I this think issue. That's so cool. So, you know, I have this pattern. It's not like I have to go out and buy the pattern. Um, I also have, you know, the issue of pom pom. So again, um, these patterns that are already in my possession, and I was thinking about making that skirt, and we'll see. The thing is, the pattern is really annoying because you have to do it's. You have a, you have two rows that you repeat that increase, and then you have two rows that you repeat that you work even, mm -hmm. and you alternate increasing and working even, but it's not like you just work increase even, increase even. Based on the size skirt you're making, you might do you know two increases in one even or one increase in two even or whatever. So mm -hmm. you really need to know which size you want to make before you start the skirt mm -hmm. because that will determine how you construct the skirt. And I got really annoyed with that and keeping up with which robe I was on. I kept getting lost in the pattern. You know what? You might need to make a chart. I might need to make a chart. And I'm thinking yeah. to myself, do I want to make something that will require me to make a chart? No, it's, let me tell you, make the chart. Because <laughs> you know I put down that shawl for like three weeks so I can finish my sweater. And I when, understand when I picked it back up, a chart, I do. Chris, I was able to go directly to the line I was on. Because but that's why I sat the first time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't depend but on keeping it in your head. I think it's such a cute skirt. It's adorable. And I think this yarn is just like just right for it. So the only thing you have to do is look for some buttons. I think we have a few. We might have a couple of buttons. Buttons. One or twenty. Eight hundred. I don't know. <laughs> we keep buying buttons. Like you would think we sell more for all the buttons we buy. But you every time we catch a sale. You always want to have buttons just in case. This, see, let me tell you, when we used to go to the, the craft stores like regularly, <laughs> we just hey, don't let there be a don't there were buttons in the clearance aisle, yo. So things happened, okay? <laughs> Say out of the craft store has been really good for us. It has. It has. <laughs> but so acre sweater, vest or possibly a slant skirt are the things that I'm, I'm looking at. And like, regardless of, you know, when I get this yarn to finish the fuzzy sweater, one of those three will be my next project. Um, I just don't know. I didn't plan to start it yet. So <laughs> I haven't made a decision. <laughs> you know what? If you have any advice for her, or if you made a skirt before and you have some advice, we'd love to hear it. Well, I made, I made a skirt. I made a couple of skirts actually. I've made skirts. I just haven't the, the shaping of this. If if you have the magazine, look at the schematic. It's a really odd shape. Yeah. So when you fold it, it looks all cute, but when it's open, it's a mess. So we'll see how this goes. It sounds like it's gonna be fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. So yeah, that that's that's all I I mean 
technically that's all. Obviously, I have like this written down list of a million ideas that I could pluck one of those from the list. I don't know. You know what? Let's just start with the three you put on the table. I think that's going to be the easiest way. You can't look at the whole universe. Narrow but I it have down. A universe in my head. Narrow it down to one solar system. <laughs> yeah, I have a universe of ideas in my head. Well, yes. Narrow it down to just one solar system. I feel system. like Johnny Mnemonic. Like, oh. <laughs> I just put too much in there. Oh no. <laughs> well, you know what? At least you don't feel like um, the young, bu- the Bundy daughter. No, nothing's falling <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, two facts. One fact falls out the other side. <laughs> nothing's falling out, but my head could explode. I don't know which is worse. <laughs> okay. Oh. No. But yeah, I think that I probably shouldn't have been watching Married with Children. I'm not sure it was appropriate for my age. Oh, it's totally inappropriate. My mom would mom. It came on I think like nine o'clock on Sunday. The mom would be in bed by then. She didn't pay me any money. Yeah. You know what? So like it, it sometimes was now when I tell her about things that happen in marriage with children, she's like, "What? <laughs> you watching what exactly?" <laughs> so if you want to know what I mean by making a chart, sometimes when you have a pattern and there's things to keep track of, I personally cannot treat, keep track of. A whole bunch of things in my head and heaven help me if i put the thing down for a while i may never be able to find the right spot and it leads to a lot of knitting ripping out and re-knitting so like with the um painting honeycombs i have to repeat 30 rows 16 times and i i made a chart you know, that's row 1 to 30, and I have 16 columns going across. And as I do a row, I just check it off. So right now, I know I'm like in row 14 of 30 in repeat number 5 of 16. So if I put that down and I don't return to it for a week, next week when I pick it back up again, I can just keep on knitting because now I don't have to figure anything out. I just have to look at my chart and see. So trust me, I'm, I'm so converted to chart making. No, I understand the wisdom of Uh-oh. making the chart. Uh-oh. I understand the concept. <laughs> I do. You know what? Hey, Keisha, how you doing? If I, if I make if I make the skirt, I would probably need a chart. So the question is, do I want to bother making the skirt? I think it would be really cute. In that it line. is cute. It, I think, yeah. I think it would be super cute. And I think you could really add some style to it by uh, choosing some really cool buttons or uh, having a little line of fun brooches going down the side. I mean, there's so many things you could do with that. I think that'd be a lot of fun. What I don't think you want to do is start the the skirt and have the sweater with the intarsia going at the same time. No, God, yeah. I would, no, I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would never do that. You don't. You don't. I, I, don't, I think you want to. I'm have... going to do one of these three projects. Okay. Well, let us know in the comments. What What do you guys think? And if you happen to have 52 weeks of socks, take a look through. There's some gorgeous socks in here. So I will be coming back to 52 Weeks of Socks several times because I do want to make some socks. Are these supposed to be socks that you could make in a week? No. Okay. Not not me personally, no. (laughs) Like someone somewhere kind of? You know what? People used to be expected to make make socks and that was the pace you were supposed to be, to be, be able to do, make a pair of socks in a week. It takes me, when I'm not working on anything else, it takes me two weeks to make a pair of socks. And that's when I devote all my knitting time so to socks. This is more of a two years of socks. Yeah, but oh my gosh, there's literally 52 patterns in here, and they're all super, super cute. I, I, you, you ever get a pattern book? And like I bought this pattern book one time, and the pattern book shall remain unnamed. But the best pattern in the whole book was the one on the cover. That's one of the things I do like to use Ravelry for. I like to look in the book and see all the patterns. Because like, yeah. if you are 
at if you're on Amazon or something, you might just see the front and back cover, mm -hmm. and you have no idea if it's it's if it's worth your money to invest in that book. Yeah, yeah. But of the fifty-two socks, if I had time to really, if I wanted to just make socks from this book, I could for quite some time because there's it's not all one style. Mm -hmm. There's many techniques that you can learn on a small scale from this book. So there's socks where you do color work, intarsia, stripes, all kinds of fun things, toe up and top down. There's even a few pairs of slippers in here. So there's just so much variety. So if you were gonna buy one sock book, this is a good one. And there are hardly any books where you get literally like 52. 52 patterns. I know. I don't think there are any crochet books. Not that I feel slighted I did not mean anything. to pick a scab. I really didn't. <laughs> but I see not I just, that I feel slighted I see anything. I just picked a scab. It's just there's so... Look, the resources for knitters that are out there, the number of books you all have available to you talking about construction. Mm-hmm. And just, just how to design and plan your sweater and the different ways you can arrange a sweater. 6,000 6, plus pullover possibilities. 6,000. Can, can That's I because get, you put all the pieces together. Can I get ways. like, you know, five pullover possibilities, please? I can have pullover possibilities. I'm just saying, like, I if it. you look at her knitting library, which I'm always encouraging her to share with people as she I'm sharing one right now. Yeah, that's just fun. Um, like you will really feel away as a crocheter because there's just so much fewer options available for us. And then, you know, like no offense. You know, I know different people like to make different things, but so much more of the conversation for knitters is around garments. Whereas crocheters, you know, we have to share our garment making you know, what advice with, you know, blankets and toys and pet items and placemats. And it's just like, can we talk about how crocheters make garments, how you make sweaters and dresses? And can we just stop chalking up crochet as like, oh, it's all bulky and you can't make clothes out of it anyway. Just like, I just like this piece you're wearing now. Is that a pattern piece or something? You made no, up? this is, I just, I just made this. But this I'm gonna, yarn gave me heck. I'm going to say something. I finished my top. And I think it's going to push you over the edge. But you're doing the same thing crocheters that make garments do. You make your own garments. You make it up. You work your way through it. And then you don't share that information. What? I, I come <laughs> here and I share. But I, I talked even about if you're not, I talked about figuring out, you know, if, my own even if Well, and, now you've started to do that. But... Even if you're not in a place where you're able to write patterns, I think that a lot of crocheters who want to make garments, you know from the store, they do one of two things. They either learn to knit or they make up their own garments and they show them in the crochet groups and they say, oh, no, no, this is a personal pattern. I just made this up. There's no pattern. Um. Not every, and I'm not saying that that is the whole reason. It's not. Yeah, it's like self, it's on the publishers. Hello, it's a self feeding cycle. If I don't know, see, I think it's really unfair to to put the blame on individual. No, no, no. It's not. It's not blaming individual it, crocheters. The way you reach those individual crocheters is with your publications, with books, and with magazines, mm -hmm. and they're not offering that kind of information. Like you know, you can find. Okay, like Shannon Mullet Bowlesby does some great videos yeah. and he's had things on Craftsy and he's had things on, I think, Andrew Weave's website. But it's really a handful of specific people yeah. who are choosing to talk about construction. And I don't know if it's because, you know, 
the the industry is not giving them more space to talk about construction. This just like I feel like the assumptions made about crocheters yes. are where the problem lies. Yes. That we're not I making garments, that. that we only work with heavy yarns, that you know, our stitches are just too bulky to make garments out of. Like, no. We face the same choices that knitters make in terms of putting the right yarn with the right stitch pattern and mm -hmm. the right construction. Um, I don't see why the, those assumptions exist. Because the big businesses, they only go with what sells. But it's a problem because what they've been offering to crocheters is going to be what sells. And if it keeps selling, that's what they're going to keep offering. Even when you look at Yarn Inspirations or um, Love, is it Love Crochet? I think it's called I Love Crochet. I think they just love crafts now. Love crafts. When they offer patterns, they're all yeah, in like for instance, worsted weight. Since you mentioned Love, they, they used to be Love Knitting and Love Crochet. And they finally, it occurred to them, hey, it, it's it's one, one group of people. We can just do Love Crafts. What, I don't know what was different about a Love Crochet website compared to a Love Knitting website. What, what, what weren't you selling the same yarns? What you know I don't what? understand. Somebody was telling me in Sit and Stitch that I don't remember what company it was, but it's Knit Picks Crochet Arm. Mm -hmm. They were trying to get uh, fingering weight yarn from Knit Picks Crochet website. Was it, is that We Crochet? It might be We Crochet, and they couldn't find any. And when they called, they said, oh, crocheters don't use. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, they don't use it because they can't get it. Or for whatever reason, some crocheters seem to believe that there's yarn for crochet because they'd come into the store because and go, they don't... can you show me what yarn you have for crocheters? And I'd have to go, all the yarn. All the yarn is for crocheters. So... I think within your store culture, we need I to just, make crocheters feel more welcome and comfortable. I just feel like, you know, because I'm designing stuff myself, I'm spending so much time figuring out a lot of things on my own. Mm -hmm. I don't always make the time to like write a blog post or something because I'm just like, I to get through a project, all of the things that I have to figure out because, you know, there isn't necessarily enough information out there for me or because I have to try to translate that information from knitting books. Um, by the time I'm done, sometimes the last thing I'm thinking about is, is to like, write about it. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. Um, it's so hard. But honestly, that's part of why I switched over to knitting because there was no resources for crochet. And uh, this was, it's better now actually than it was 20 years ago. Is it 20 years already? Jesus Christ. No, no. Whew, okay. 15 <laughs> years no, 15, ago. 15, that's way different. <laughs> <laughs> when I started to knit, there was just so much that I could find to read and, and learn. And, and as you do all the reading first, I <laughs> like the rest of us, it just forge ahead. I do do the reading. <laughs> because you know what? Sometimes it just saves you so many steps. You know, and I always feel like there's so much to learn anyway. If I don't have to figure everything out myself, you know, somebody already figured it out. Now, do you frequent like crochet blogs? Are there a lot of crochet blogs? I know of blogs that sell patterns. Okay. And like they don't talk about their process. They, okay. they, they sell you patterns. And so they'll do a write-up about a particular garment and say, okay, this is what I do. And, you know, the, the the way they do it is they have the pattern free on their website yeah. with, with ads, or you can buy the pattern right, right, right. without the ads. Um, that's, that's typically because what you find. what I was always more interested in was the how and why. Not necessarily the what, because even if you look, you always say I have a million knitting books. If you look at my knitting books, the more I, <laughs> the more I got into knitting, the less I bought pattern books. Because at first, you know, you buy the pattern and books because they're pretty pictures. Pattern books because I couldn't find Technique any books. other kinds. Of, so I was using those pattern books to, to get the kind things. of knowledge that I was looking for. But yeah. I would just have to follow the pattern and see what that person did. Um, 
there was nothing that said, oh, well, before you start, you want to do like, you know, how to figure out how much yarn you're going to need. Yeah. Things like that, increasing and decreasing in, in pattern. You know, there just isn't that type of I know. conversation. And the, the first person that comes up when I think about somebody who talks about that stuff, at least in her writings, is Dora Orenstein. But she's the one. She's the one. Um, and I don't, I have to check and see if she got ever got her website up. She was, she was building a website herself and I know the pain of that. So, all right. <laughs> um, but she's got several books that I think are some of the best textbooks really out there for crocheters. But they're few and far between. They are. And there should be more. And you know what? Her books are still pattern books. But what she does is at the beginning of the book, she has like a long section where she just talks about construction. So it might be like the first 30, 40 pages of the book is just conversation about yeah. construction and then patterns. And I don't know if, you know, publishers would really just publish a book that's just about construction. The only one I can think of is Shannon Millett Bowlesby's Complete Crochet Complete Crochet, crochet Course. Yeah. Um, but even that one, I mean, that has some useful things in it, but I feel like it's still... Pattern focus? No, it does have some patterns at the back of the book, but I think it's still kind of a beginner thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So some of the techniques that I'm looking for aren't mm -hmm. necessarily in there. But he, you know, he does, a, he covers a lot, but kind of cursory. Now, does he give you any clues? Is there like a, a, a bibliography in that book that you can hunt down some of his sources? I don't know if there's a bibliography because I know a lot of this stuff just like kind of came from him. I'm not sure that he was really utilizing a lot of other resources so in that, terms of how to. That would be where I would start looking because one of the things we've had in in Knit World is that there have been blogs by really excellent technicians like Kim Knits is a blog. I don't think she writes it anymore, but people still refer to Kim Knits blogs because she would actually do the experiment and tell you, here's what I did, here's how it turned out, here's how I figured out how to do it better. So you could really learn a lot from that. And I'm hoping that there's, there will be a resource out there like that for crocheters. And the sad thing is, it may not exist in English. Oh, don't even get me started on that. It may not exist in English, but it might be out there, you know, in another language or two. So it, it's, it's been hard <laughs> yeah. to learn how to design on my own because you do feel like as a crocheter, you just have way less support. There aren't that many people. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a designer and you're trying to make money from selling your patterns, it seems counterproductive to you to teach people how to design their own things. Right. So, yeah, most of the, the crochet designers out there are not doing that plus it's also just time consuming yeah and if you're running everything by yourself yeah. you know it's, when, it's when not you your business time, model yeah it's not your business model so we're gonna need to talk about your books yes we can do a segment book of the week it's been more than one because it's gonna take us forever if we do <laughs> one book a week we could do one but that way we can have a real conversation about it I feel a little embarrassed by the state of my collection. And so we have like this one bookshelf, you know, the, the big Ikea bookshelf, right? Um, so she had a row, her row grew and she just started putting books on other shelves. And then we had this other little skinny bookshelf, like just hiding in the corner. And she just kind of co-opted one of the cubbies on that one. and thought no one noticed that, wait a minute, now there's knitting <laughs> books them, over here too. It took them a little while to notice. I, got I was like, wait a minute. That's my color work section. What you see? She has like freaking what is Library of Congress sorting whatever I, I don't have. for her knitting books because she has that many. But like I said, as I grew as a knitter, I stopped really buying the pretty picture books because they were inspiring. But when I was buying a lot of those pattern books, I had absolutely no hope of ever making those things. I was still knitting backwards, <laughs> and then. I discovered that, hey, um, you know, there are other books out there where you can learn how to do things and maybe you can make some of those things you've, you've got in those pretty books where 
you know, I didn't know what Intarsia was the first time I, I saw it. And I was like, oh. And for me, I felt like patterns were limiting just because everything was worth it. Like, and, everything. and I got to a point where I would see things and be like, oh, this would look so much nicer. <laughs> I know. And we'd be both be like, why they do it in worsted? But so. they did it in worsted because it was a pattern design for a pattern company that wants to support the yarn it sells to crocheters and it really only offers worsted and above to crocheters. So I'm 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 trying to grow as a crocheter. I just feel like it's much slower for me. <laughs> That's not fast for anything. I feel like I have to do everything wrong thrice <laughs> before I finally figure out how to get it right. It would just be nice to have a resource that I could just no. do it wrong once. Yeah, yeah. And then look up how to do it. We're like, oh, that's the mistake I made. Okay. You know what? Let's let's look at um I'll look around and see what I can I can find. At least some names. She got hoop dreams. I do have hoop dreams, Dale. I do. Well, I guess because we're talking about yarn, you got loop dreams. I do have loop dreams. I have hoop dreams and loop dreams. I like that. We're going to have to make a t-shirt. It says Loop Dreams. Maybe a month. That in and of itself is Hoop Dream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we're done. I think so, too. I could go. I could rant more, but I won't. But thanks for spending some time with us. Like Crystal always says, our mom would like it so much if you yes, like and subscribe. She, it would make her so happy. Every time she watches, when she tells us how many <laughs> yeah, subscribers she's like, we have. She has more subscribers. She's so, so excited. It really does actually make her happy. So thank you so much. See you guys next week. Bye.